Good morning, students. So today's class um, is about uh, the continuation of CNNs. CNNs, if you recall, stand for convolutional neural networks or convonets are the type of neural networks optimized to work with images. There are uh, different kinds of layers in CNNs like convolutional layers, pooling layers, um, flattening layer and uh, fully connected layer. And the convolutional layer has filters and the stride padding and uh, number of filters these are the hyperparameters in the convolutional layer and convolutional layer performs the dot matrix operation uh, that is multiplication operation on uh, on uh, kernel or filter and the image pixel the result is the feature map or the activation map followed by uh, that uh, multiplication operation is the activation function here in cnn as well activation functions that are most popular uh, okay uh, before that activation function is used to uh, add or introduce non-linearity into the model without activation function eventually the resultant of the entire neural network would be a linear function only and linear functions are uh, uh, useful only uh, in few of the problems, not in all of the problems. Therefore, it is essential to have nonlinear functionality and to have that activation function is used. Look at here linear. Identity function or linear function wherein y is equal to x. If you consider this to be x and this to be y, then if x is 1, y is 1. If x is 5, y is 5. If x is 100, y is 100. y is equal to x. It's linear. And uh, because the learning takes place through gradient descent, which uh, uh, has has uh, this derivative values for uh, the activation function uh, therefore you need to know the derivatives of every activation function the Der derivative of a linear uh, function is this y dash is equal to 1 sigmoid activation function looks like s shape on the plot and it is uh, uh, the equation is this one exponent to power x where you get x from that sum operation over 1 plus e, pl e power uh, uh, x this you can solve it to 1 by 1 plus e power minus, uh, minus x so sigmoid is a activation function which accepts the output of summation and uh, which uh, uh, applies this equation on this x is nothing but that output of some summation 
and it appears in S shape curve. The derivative is given here. Tan H hyperbolic tangent function. The difference between uh, this sigmoid and tangent is that the range of sigmoid is between 0 and 1. Range of tangent uh, function is between uh, 0 uh, between minus 1 and plus 1. Uh, you can see here, here it is extending up to minus 1. It's not only between 0 and 1, it's between minus 1 and plus 1. And Gaussian function, uh, which uh, apparently represents the normal distribution, and the equation for Gaussian is this. This is the uh, most significant function with respect to CNNs and CNN is considered to be the most popular activation function uh, used in CNN. The primary feature of uh, this ReLU function is that it is quite simple yet uh, powerful. ReLU stands for rectified linear unit. If you uh, look at here, uh, y, the output, is equal to 0 when the input x is less than 0. What does it uh, signifies? That uh, all the negative values are um, changed to 0. Negatives are not considered in a ReLU activation function. And uh, all positives remain same. If it is 2, if input is 2, output is same as 2. Whenever input is greater or equal to 0, output is uh, identical. For uh, negative numbers which are less than 0, output is equal to 0. Look at here, this curve, uh, this This one here, it's like this, this uh, greater than 0, greater than or equal to 0, this is less than 0, less than 0 negative number. Whenever it is uh, a negative number, it is uh, substituted with a value 0. And whenever it is positive, that positive value output is same as that positive value. Leaky ReLU is a variant of ReLU activation function. The problem that uh, occurs in ReLU is that uh, there might be, uh, you know, uh, neurons uh, generating a negative output and because of that, it is uh, evaluating to zero. And then such type of neurons are considered to be dead neurons and dead neurons uh, will give rise to a problem wherein if there are several negative values, several uh, neurons will become dead in the architecture which is not quite uh, good for our model. Therefore, uh, a small uh, very um, minute value, it can be 0 0.0001 or 0 0.003 uh, used as the constant uh, which is B here, B into X. Uh, if, if, if the value of uh, uh, X which is the input to ReLU is less than 0, then you multiply a small constant value with x. Uh, then what happens is uh, the neurons will not yield value 0. Otherwise what happens all the x values which are negative will uh, make that neuron 0 because uh, ReLU function is designed in such a manner. Uh, there is change only here a constant b is multiplied with x whenever x is less than 0. Otherwise, it's same. You can uh, look at this. Uh, you know, um, graph of uh, 
relu wherein you have x here and y here and uh, if you observe here it's not a uh, zero it's not a constant zero rather uh, you are having a variable value for every neuron uh, which is uh, yielding to a negative value uh, with the a negative input is giving out some value it, it is not zero that and that is the uh, aim of having a constant value it should not have a zero and then softmax uh, is generally used in the output layer what happens is uh, consider uh, a data set which has animals cat dog horse these are the three animals in the data set and our model has to classify the image into the appropriate class so what are the classes there are three classes cat class dog class horse class what happens uh, in this cnn is that you will have three nodes in the output layer this is our output layer output layer has three nodes why we have three nodes it is equal to the number of classes or categories in our data set because there are three categories we have three nodes and what the model does is uh, gives out the probability value in case you give cat image this denote cat this denote dog and this denote horse if you give cat image as the input probably uh, this node gives the highest probability value it may be 0.9 and for dog uh, it might give point um 05 this might or 4 then this might give 0.06 by looking at this probability value you can determine the class of the image and uh, these probabilities should sum up to 1 okay so this will be equal to 1 the same thing is uh, shown here uh, wherein you have three classes a b c and uh, here you are getting the probability values of these three classes as 0.7 0.2 and 0.1 which sums to 1 1.0 and uh, 0.7 uh, indicate that there is a high probability of having a as the class of the image all right and uh, there are less probabilities of to have the labels as b and c because these two uh, denote uh, a smaller probability value uh, relative to this value that this is softmax and you can see that this exponent to e whatever input uh, value you are getting for this a over this is for all for all so here when you sum this up you get 3.1 and you you take uh, actually you don't uh, sum them directly you take uh, e exponent to the power of a uh, whatever value you get that plus exponent to power b and e to power c so that total will be uh, the de denominator and if you do in this manner you get the probability values and uh, this numerator and denominator this e to the power i 1 minus e to power j for all i equal to j so exponent to i i means here you will have different classes if you consider class a i will be a 
and when you consider a uh, here uh, j will be a because i is equals to j and denominator will be for all uh, uh, the classes now consider this uh, matrix this is before applying relu activation function uh, you can consider this to be the output of convolutional layer uh, and if you observe here you have certain values which are higher than 255 we know that maximum value which a pixel can have is 255 minimum value which a pixel can have is 0 and here you can see there are some values greater than 255 and there are negative values as well this is before relu after applying of the relu what happens this minus 2 uh, turns out to be 0 because uh the relu operation will change it to zero and also uh, because these are the values that are greater than the expected highest value of for a pixel these will be automatically scaled down to 255 so uh, this Three pixels receive a value of 255. That is automatic. Uh, it 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 checks if the pixel value is greater than 255, then pixel value should be equal to 255 when you write the code. So that is about convolutional layer. In convolutional layer, you have both the operations: sum operation and activation function. Uh, going ahead with next type of layer which is pooling layer pooling layer significance is that it uh, tries to reduce the size uh, so that uh, it is uh, easy to uh, process the image what happens is if you have an image of 512 by 512 dimensions this processing this single image only takes lot of compute power and just imagine having 1000 images or even you know 1 million images with this size it's quite uh, compute intensive sometimes uh, our computer cannot handle that much of uh you know data at once because of the restriction of ram and uh, several other factors uh, it, it 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 is uh, efficient to reduce the size of the uh, image after every convolutional layer uh, so that you can preserve its properties as well as you can reduce its size and that is one use of the pooling uh another is that it creates spatial invariance and decrease the amount of computation is this one is first one this one is second one spatial invariance spatial invariance means as you go along finding the features please recall that features are those elements in in an image that uh, combine together to form an image for instance your circles and your curves your edges and uh, colors this black this white these are the features as you uh, go uh, and uh, um, go on pro uh, processing the image what happens is um, you are able to find the you are able to find the features which may occur anywhere in the image that is known as spatial invariance 
if you have an i two eyes here or here it doesn't make any difference uh, cnn model can identify the eyes if they are here or if they are here that is spatial invariance all right how is pooling performed there are um, multiple ways of performing pooling operation you can have max pooling or you can have average pooling uh, what happens uh, in max pooling is you create a window sort of uh, block uh, uh, depends on the size that is specified for pool if you say the pool size to be 2 by 2 then you create you you consider this 2 by 2 block and in this 2 by 2 block which whichever pixel is having the highest value is taken into consideration and remaining are ignored that is max pooling in average pooling when the size of pool is 2 by 2 Uh, you uh, add them all and divide by uh, the total to get the average pixel value uh, for this block and you place that here and uh, please remember that um, you know it universally we use max pooling and uh, very rarely we go for other kinds of pooling so max pooling is the most widely and popular used pooling mechanism in cnns wherein uh, uh, you uh, take a block and uh, uh, the size is specified uh, picks up the highest pixel value and uh, uh, just uh, you know ignore the other values uh, if you uh, look at here this is w by h width by h which is 6 by 6 when you uh, perform pooling operation on this 6 by 6 matrix by going over pixel values uh, in in 2 by 2 uh, window uh, or pool uh, size then you obtain half of its image you obtain h by h so how do you come how do you uh, compute this how do you compute means w is the width and n is the uh, size of the pool if you, if i say n uh, 2 by 2 this is n by m and if w is 6 6 by 2 uh, by height is also 6 6 by m is also 2 which which will give you and you don't have to perform that multiplication operation here what you have to do is uh, consider this and this individually because these represent the size of the image so 2 3 by 3 this the resultant image dimensions are 3 by 3 uh, and therefore you are reducing the size initially you we considered this block next we have uh, taken it forward to the next 2 by 2 block again we'll take it forward to next 2 by 2 block likewise we obtain the pixel values for all of these blocks the summary of uh, pooling layer is it accepts a volume when do you call it a volume you have three dimensions so you call that as volume so image has a volume of width height and depth and uh, pooling layer requires two hyperparameters that is their spatial extent spatial extent is nothing but the uh, size of that uh, window or a block i we considered in a previous example 2 by 2 and stride a stride you know that is a step size 
If it is one, it moves only one step ahead. If it's two, it moves two step ahead and so on. And it produces a volume of size, um, output width, output height and output depth. And how do you compute this? Um, you have to do this uh, division operation on uh, input width and spatial extent. That is the size of that block. So these are the hyperparameters. Uh, hyperparameters are extremely significant for the design of your CNN and hyperparameters determine uh, the uh, efficiency and effectiveness of the model. Flattening. What do you mean by flattening? That is the next kind of layer uh, in a CNN. When you have a matrix, this is three by three, you convert this into a vector. This one, one, six, four, eight, three, three, five, four, one, eight, seven. Like these uh, matrices are converted into vectors and thus you are flattening. This is known as flattening. Why it is known as flattening? Because you are getting only a single column. Here you have three columns. Flattening is essentially that much only. There is nothing more to understand in flattening. It's just about converting a uh, mattress into a vector. Fully connected uh, layers. Fully connected layer is also known as dense layer. Why it is known as dense layer or fully connected layer? Because a node is connected to all the other nodes in the succeeding layer. Or we can say in other words, a node in one layer is connected to all the nodes in its preceding layer. Uh, typically, uh, this is an output layer. Uh, like in classical neural networks or our regular or ordinary neural networks, feed forward neural networks or fully connected neural networks. Fully connected layer also poses an activation function. Typically you use sigmoid or softmax. Look at the difference when you have to use sigmoid and when you have to use softmax. In sigmoid, uh, this there is a one node and you have to have a threshold value in sigmoid activation function. A threshold value uh, is suppose 0.5. If the threshold value is 0.5, if this is a point, if 0.5 is a threshold value, everything less than 0.5 belongs to false class or no class and everything greater or equal to 0.5 belongs to uh, true class or yes class so the question is is it a lion you 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 specify uh, for instance an image of lion when do you say that image is a lion's image if the output is greater or equal to 0.5 if the output is greater or equal to 0.5 you say that that image is a lion's image otherwise you say that it is not a lion's image that is uh, how sigmoid operates sigmoid has an uh, threshold value softmax Softmax is, max is uh, uh, 
uh, an activation function uh, employed on the output uh, layer nodes and softmax will generate probability value what is the probability that that image is a lion's image and what is the probability that that image is a dog's image when there are two classes here and the both the probabilities will sum up to 1 so softmax will generate probability values sigmoid will generate a single numeric value between 0 and 1 and you have to uh, uh, you know choose a threshold typically it is 0.5 so if it is greater than 0.5 it is a lion otherwise it is a dog in a two class problem means it, means if it is not a lion it is a dog it belongs to class 0 okay and what is this uh, this is a loss function loss function will uh, measure how well a neural network has performed for instance uh, if if i take an analogy of exam out of 100 marks out of 100 marks if students obtain 88 marks so what is the loss here the loss is 12 marks make accuracy is 88 means this is uh, don't take it this in true sense this this applies only uh, you know for specific examples not for all examples uh, this 88 and 12 laws is applicable for numerical problems for categorical problems or for class problems category problems this directly do, does not uh, have relation that if accuracy is 88 you get loss 100 minus 88 is equal to something don't get like that uh, however in uh, prediction problems like uh, prediction of house price or rainfall you can have like this uh, a relation the loss function is uh, here this is uh, you 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 uh, of, you know uh, log value you have to obtain the log value compute the log value you don't uh, take uh, the uh, loss loss this loss directly in its uh, true value rather it takes the log value because if you use log value uh, you can find the derivatives and you know derivatives are um, mandatory to uh, to enable the model to learn to facilitate learning derivatives are uh, essential so to uh, obtain the derivative uh, you have to take the log value of the loss not the loss itself if you take just the log itself you may not uh, be able to find the derivative and therefore you cannot make the model learn okay this is the derivative and uh, the loss this is for binary classification what is this um, this is um, log of T, T is true class, hmm? true class and uh, Y is predicted class, uh, T into log of Y minus 1 minus T into log of 1 minus Y, T, T true class, uh, if, if, if it should belong to class 0 and the output is 1, so this is 0 into 1 minus uh, 1 minus 0 into log of uh, 1 minus 1 like this you have to perform the uh, you know of equation uh, and operation to obtain the loss and for multi-class classification it's not just uh, one true and one uh, generated 
uh, you have uh, i equal to 0 to m where m denotes the number of classes so for every class it is true and log of uh, the predicted y is predicted t is true this for multi class classification okay this we already discussed true confusion matrix is also a evaluation criteria for uh, it's, it's, it's a table that visualize the performance of the classification algorithm in order to evaluate and assess the performance of cla classification algorithm you use this confusion matrix and then you can find a true positive rate true negative rate positive predicted value negative predicted value accuracy sensitivity and sensitivity and specificity are nothing but uh, here you see true positive rate is sensitivity true negative rate is specificity and this AUC curve area under receiver operating characteristic curve then gradient descent is calculated uh, you know uh, in this manner loss with respect to gradients of loss with respect to gradients of weights and this is the learning rate and the architecture this is a typical architecture of CNN where the input is the image uh, having multiple uh, filters in the convolutional layers these are the convolutional layers with multiple filters and uh, image is given to all the filters further the image is the, these feature maps the generated feature maps from these uh, uh, convolutional layers are uh, reduced in the volume by using the pooling and this red block you can have series of red blocks you can repeat it and followed by the this blue lined block uh, which is which uh, contains the nodes uh, which are fully connected and here after when uh, the output of this red block exits from this red block and enter into this blue block here you perform the flattening operation you perform flattening and after flattening you get the uh, a vector on which you perform the classification function this red block denotes convolutional and pooling layers which are meant to extract features additionally you have fully connected uh, network or dense layers that performs classification operation once features are identified to, to which class that image belongs is decided here in this section and you can see here convolutional layer pooling layer okay here after flattening you get this and this is output layer and output layer has a softmax activation there are other concepts which are useful when you are training a model uh, one of them is data augmentation this data augmentation is useful when you does not have adequate number of training data samples typically uh, to train a deep learning model you should have four four five thousand images two thousand also okay even hundreds also okay um, even four hundred five hundred 
images also you can uh, feed in as uh, the input to the deep learning model which is convolutional neural networks in this case here in this context we are talking about cnns sometimes you will have only very few uh, data samples uh, for instance you have only 400 and you would like to increase this count from 400 to 1000 how can you do that you can add 600 more images which are generated through data augmentation process if you have a cat here I don't know it does not it, it may not look like a cat but please consider this to be a cat if this is a cat here what do you do through augmentation process you you just uh, change its location if the cat is placed here you just move it up or down or you can uh, crop little bit of the uh, back background or you can uh, rotate the image or you can uh, flip the image through this process rotation rotate flip crop these are data augmentation uh, methods through these you can generate for the same image several other images that is data augmentation dropout regularization regularization is a concept that is used to avoid overfitting what is overfitting underfitting and right fitting was discussed in another video in another lecture actually uh, but then uh, quickly uh, i'll touch upon these in overfitting what happens is the data um, um, the model fits quite well on the training data if this is the training data our model learns the exact features of this training data okay and in just right the model does not exactly fit but it is giving a good result and in overfitting oh this overfit i said no right this 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 this, this is underfitting this underfitting model does not fit the data samples well and uh, apparently there is a big uh, loss or the difference between the actual and uh, the predicted is more and therefore the accuracy is reduced and loss is increased here accuracy is perfect on training on the contrary uh, on testing accuracy will go down now here it looks like this this is training perfect and this one is testing this is overfitting and uh, in just right this one is training and this one is testing there will not be much uh, difference and in underfitting this is training and this is testing both the curves are not uh, fitted properly and does not give good accuracy if if I, if you um, uh, plot uh, accuracy on y axis and uh, here you have uh, x as the number of epochs then as you 
go on uh, keep 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 straining the model um, and uh, you increase the epoch the accuracy will improve okay so the, uh, dropout regularization whenever there is this situation arises this is known as overfitting when this situation arises what have what what can be done is in this model in a complex and uh, relatively larger mo uh, model where there are many many uh, nodes dropout will eliminate some of them you are dropout it, it depends on the percentage if you say 10% of these nodes should be dropped out then if there are 100 nodes then 10 nodes are dropped out all right if if it is 5% only 5 in case of 100 uh, nodes in your network so the percentage is specified for the dropout regularization mechanism and it is useful to avoid overfitting okay here if you observe here this image this is an image this class one this this these uh, values denote class one and here this denotes class zero wherever you this zero this zero okay then uh, what do you do here? Here you are using ReLU, here you are using Sigmoid and feed forward. Feed forward, feed forward means this image is given as input to this network and uh, initially by using a filter or a kernel you obtain the feature map by performing the multiplication operation and then you obtain this feature map you know how to do this we discussed it later after you obtain the feature map you have to apply the relu activation function here because there are no negative values the are there any negatives no the, the output of relu is same followed by next this feature map is given as input to max pooling and max pooling what are, what, what is the size 2 by 2 and you get here two, here two, here two, and here three. Look at here two, 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 three, based on the maximum pixel value. And then after this pooling layer, you have to flatten two, 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 three is flattened like in this manner and then after flattening what do you have to do you have to um, classify it and here there are some weights two 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 three multiplied with weights get some value here and if you say uh, sigmoid uh, you know sigmoid is one by one plus e to the power of minus z and how do you compute this z value z value you are getting here 2 into this plus 2 into this plus 2 into and 3 into then you get this z 1.7 as the z value 1 by 1 plus e 2 power minus z which is equal to 0 0.8 0 0.8 means what it is greater than 0.5 so you say that that is if it is a 4 you can say that uh, image is 4 and back propagation what is back propagation after you obtain this you send it back 
look at here loss is calculated what what should be the actual value hmm? what is predicted and based on this uh, predicted is this actual is this here actual value given is 1 so loss is 0.155 uh, and then you have to find the derivative derivatives of this log loss derivative which is 0.144 and then uh, you take this derivative value and propagate back so this uh, here you have obtained the derivative of loss with respect to the weights after you get this you have to send it back and use that along with these values and uh, standard deviation of z and 1 minus z here you substitute the values what values you please uh, try to um, trace this if you can't then we will study in tomorrow's class this this one if you if you can trace it it would be very nice did you understand both the students rachana and yasin yes ma'am everything is clear yes ma'am very good so uh, i will uh, rachana i will send the uh, class code google classroom code to you you please join the code all the material you will find it there uh, okay. and and this also i will post in that uh, classroom so that you can access notes are also there in that uh, okay. some interview questions are there related to deep learning the material i have posted in the google classroom okay, okay students okay then bye bye see you tomorrow bye.